It's time for Ask the Tech Guy. This week on Ask the Tech Guy, is there any way to send email safely on a cell phone? Stay tuned. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy brought to you as always by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Hey everybody, welcome to Ask the Tech Guy. My question comes uh, from, actually I don't know what his name is, we'll say uh, Joe from Indiana. Isn't that what uh, Micah always says? What cell phones, Joe asks, are safe for getting email sent from my BlackBerry, the most secure mobile device? Eh, Joe, I don't know if the BlackBerry still is the most secure mobile device. In fact, bad news TCL has announced they're going to stop. TCL is a Chinese company, by the way, licensing the BlackBerry brand. That's probably the BlackBerry you have, unless you have a really old one. TCL has announced it's going to stop making and selling BlackBerry phones. I think it's the end of the line for BlackBerry phones. But it's been a long time since BlackBerry really was the only secure email solution. Their reputation for that dates back to the early 2000s. And by the way, I was all in. I remember getting my first BlackBerry pager with that great keyboard and sending messages back and forth. BlackBerry introduced the BlackBerry Enterprise server, BES. They ran it, or your company ran it, in a secure fashion. And that's why Blackberries were so widely used in government, in businesses, in boardrooms. It was easy to use that keyboard, easy to look at messaging, and relatively secure. In fact, when President Obama got in, he loved his BlackBerry. That's back in 2008. BlackBerry's fortunes began to decline around that time. The introduction of the iPhone uh, didn't hurt. In fact, I bought an iPhone in 2007 when it first came out to replace my beloved BlackBerry Pearl. Uh, BlackBerry's reputation for secure email has faded a lot in the intervening years, as has the company's reputation for its phones, partly because the server is less secure than it ever was, partly because it was a Chinese company making BlackBerry phones and all the data from the BlackBerry phone went through China. But the good news is there are secure ways to email, and it's become much more secure just kind of by default. For instance, if you use Google's solution, Gmail, it encrypts email in transit. If it's going to another Gmail user, it never leaves their server. It's encrypted. If you send it to another email service, many modern email services also support encryption, usually TLS encryption, which is designed for HTTP and mail servers. That TLS encryption will make your email private as it transits the Internet. You should know, though, that most email companies do not encrypt your email on their servers. So the person you're sending it to can read it, but so can, in theory, the company where he's storing his email, the company where you store your email. The reason they don't encrypt is, well, I can give you a lot of reasons, but number one is spam. Uh, if your email company offers spam protection... The only way they can do it is by looking through the contents of your email. So that'll tell you right there, the email is not encrypted on the email company's servers. There have been lately a number of companies that promise encrypted email, what they call trust no one encrypted email. They can't see it. No one can see it in transit. Only your recipient can see it. In every case, these systems require some hoop jumping because in order for the person who, re who receives your email to read it, he has to provide a password or log into the email provider's server. There, there's some complicated stuff there, but it does promise secure email. Uh, there are a number of companies like this. Proton Mail is very well known. Uh, Postio has been around for a while. Mailbox.org. I use Tuta Nota. Uh, that's out of Germany. But... But I should point out that these services are a little bit under attack. Mailbox, for instance, .org. Uh, recently, Russia threatened to stop allowing the use of Mailbox.org in Russia because it violated their law about providing unencrypted text uh, upon demand of law enforcement. I suspect that's going to be the case all around the country. So another choice, a choice that would defeat prying eyes, even government prying eyes, would be to use 
end-to-end -end encryption that you roll yourself. That's what PGP, or the more modern GNU Privacy Guard, offer. You run a program on your side that encrypts your email before you even put it in the email program, before you even send it. The server can't read it. And in fact, no one can read it along the way, even your recipient. The problem with that is you have to do a key exchange beforehand so the recipient knows how to decrypt the email and read it. It's a complicated system. And lately, we've learned it's a fairly old system that there are flaws in PGP and uh, GNU Privacy Guard that sometimes leak information out. So it may not be the best way. In my opinion, email will never be fully secure. It's just the nature of email. You should use email like you would use, I don't know, a postcard in the postal service. Assume nobody's reading it, but that it's possible for, for a motivated uh, attacker or mailman to read it and, and never put anything in email that's private. I sometimes see emails with big, long signature blocks from attorneys saying, don't read this if you're not the intended recipient. Oh, good luck. <laughs> I don't know how legally binding that is, but it's certainly not technically preventing anybody from reading that email. If you want private messaging, email is not the solution. There is a good solution out there, though. It's called Signal. It's open source. In my opinion, any encryption solution, any privacy solution has to be open source. It's the only way you can guarantee there are no government or company backdoors, that it's done properly, that it's vetted properly. And if it's open source, chances are even if a, a flaw, a security flaw is found in that software, it will be fixed fairly quickly. So whenever I want a secure privacy and encryption solution, I I always go to open source. And the best open source messaging program out there, I think, is, is called Signal. It's at signal.org. It is open source. It's well supported. It's created by very talented cryptographers using state-of-the-art methodology, stuff that PGP, Gmail, nobody else can do, even ProtonMail and Tutanota. Now, the downside of Signal is... Both ends of the conversation have to be using Signal Messenger. The good news is it's free and it's available everywhere. Mac, Windows, iOS, Android, Linux. So it's very easy to get a Signal-compatible program. If you use Signal, uh, any message that you uh, send to somebody using Signal on the other end will be encrypted. Only they will be able to read it. You can have group messages. You can have chat. Uh, I think it's a very good solution. Basically, my recommendation is if you want privacy, don't use email. Use Signal. Uh, the good news is every modern phone is well-protected, well-encrypted, iOS and Android. And if you're using an encrypted messaging program on top of that, like Signal, you're as private as private can be, at least for now. Hey, what a great question. Thank you for asking. And uh, please, if you've got more questions about this or any topic, I'd love to hear from you. Email askthetechguy at twit.tv. Our show is always brought to you by LastPass. LastPass is a personal password manager and identity solution for business. It, it helps you secure everywhere you work, everywhere you live. You can use it to share passwords or secure notes within LastPass to other employees at your business, to family members at home. I put corporate credit cards, driver's license, social security numbers, everything in my LastPass. And now LastPass offers passwordless login options for employees. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time on Ask the Tech Guy. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv.